Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. And the news tonight, bus operators told to change with time. Police investigate bus stoning incident. And construction industry plays a vital role in the economy. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Saga. The economy minister has called on the Fiji Bus Operators Association to change its outward frustrative approach and learn to collaborate internally. Speaking at the association's annual meeting in Lamy today, Minister Aya Sayed Kayum says it was obvious bus operators are failing to work together. Rachel Nart reports that collaboration is only evident when rallying for a bus fare increase. Economy Minister I.R. Said Kiyum says an organizational change is needed in the bus industry. You need to understand your market. Because if you have the same modus operandi, the same way of engagement with all the stakeholders, you will always feel that nothing is being done right. There sometimes need to be a natural re reorganization within that particular sector itself. And some of you know what, what, what I'm talking about. Some of you may be growing too long in the tooth to actually stay within the sector. The Bus Operators Association also listed out its complaints to the minister. We are now at a crossroad and how we handle what's coming in the next few months and years will determine whether we live or die as an industry. We do understand and we do appreciate and recognize that the bus industry plays a pivotal role in the Fijian economy. Let me categorically state that. We are not undervaluing you. The new policies announced in the 2019-2020 national budget was also debated. I don't think so the operators can buy the buses now because the Euro fire. The prices will go 250,000 open buses and the coach will be go 350,000. Basically, the bus price will go up. But we also, as announced in the budget, you can also import ready-made buses. You know that. Uh, and that's 0% duty. You can also import second-hand buses. As long as Euro 4, age does not matter, as long as Euro 4. The minister says if the industry wants to continue achieving growth, it needs to change with time. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Police are now investigating the stoning of a Pacific Transport bus which was on its way to Suva from Lotoka last night. The company says the bus was carrying more than 40 passengers, but luckily no one was injured. Savaratambo reports the incident happened near Nabua and an alternative bus was arranged to transport passengers to Suva. This is not the first time a Pacific Transport bus has been stoned. The sixth incident last night is now worrying the company. I have uh, lodged the police uh, complaints to the police of various uh, where the accident happened. But still that police has never come and give us any assurance or anything in regards to the investigation or any feedback if they have caught any people doing that. The bus that was uh, stoned is currently in our garage, will be going for repairs on Monday. Deputy Police Commissioner Rusia Tetunravu confirms that they've received the report and they are investigating the matter. The investigation is currently undergoing. I would like to reassure uh, the bus company that uh, every effort has been done for the safety of the, the driver and the passengers themselves. And know that there was no feedback uh, to the company, bus company in regards to that, uh, uh, but we are looking into that. Transport Minister Johnny Usamati says that Fijians need to respect the services provided by the public service transport. And I hope that uh, if people know who is doing these sorts of things, that they need to be reported to the police who are carrying out that investigation. And they need to put a stop to it. The services provided for the benefit of people. And I urge members of the public, if they are aware who is throwing these stones, please pass out that information to the police. We need to put a stop to it. Pacific Transport Buses says they are concerned with the safety of their passengers and the stoning of their buses is costing them a lot. Sabera Tamboa, FBC News.
The Construction Industry Council was today reminded on the importance of their contribution to the Fijian economy. Speaking at the conference in Suva, Governor of the Reserve Bank Arif Ali says the industry generates employment opportunities and income from both the formal and informal sectors. Kritika Kumar reports. The construction industry plays a pivotal role in boosting any economy, but most importantly, it links with other sectors. There's a very strong correlation between how the economy is performed and construction. When the construction industry does well, our economy does well because it's a sign of confidence. And when the economy is not doing well, you'll also see that construction activity significantly slows down. RBF Governor Arif Ali says the total number of people employed directly to the construction industry is close to 12,000. We at the Reserve Bank think that the construction industry is very important for the economy. It is the foundation of, of, of building blocks for the economy. It is a sign of confidence. Uh, we look at construction industry very carefully. The Reserve Bank also monitors the issuance of building permits as it will indicate the growth of infrastructure development in the next 12 months. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Still to come, South Pacific Stock Exchange opens new office. And Fiji Albanism Project highlights rural challenges. Details after the break. It's essential for any modern economy to have a sound capital market. This is highlighted by Economy Minister Ayas Said Fayyum while opening the new South Pacific Stock Exchange office in Suva yesterday. He says there's massive potential for Fiji's capital market. Kritika Kumar tells us more. It was milestone achievement for the South Pacific Stock Exchange as having an additional space increases not only their visibility but also prominence amongst investors. We hope to, of course, have a um, partial divestment uh, completed uh, by the month of July which will mean that it will be a much easier path for the listing of the company, at least in the next 18 months or so. Economy Minister Yaseid Kayum says there is also potential for Fiji to further enhance its hub status. Already uh, from the financial markets perspective, uh, from the uh, communications perspective, Fiji plays a pivotal role uh, within the region itself. And we think that can be further enhanced with South Pacific Stock Exchange playing more a critical role in that respect. South Pacific Stock Exchange Chair Dr. Noor Banu Ali says they currently have five shareholders, one of which is the Fiji Development Bank. The SBX today has 20 listed companies having a total market cap of $3.62 billion compared to less than a million in, in market cap in 2012. So essentially in the last seven years, a lot of growth has happened. The SPX also launched an outdoor stock ticker display screen and their new image with a branded logo. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. People with albinism living in villages are finding it difficult to abide by some traditional taboos. The Fiji Albinism Project says people with albinism need to wear sunglasses, hats and long pants in order to protect themselves from the sun, especially the risk of developing skin cancer. Savara Tambor reports. Talks are ongoing between the Fiji Albinism Project and the Ministry of Ethiopia Affairs on the health of people with albinism in rural areas. This is not a luxury, it is a need. We, if we have to work out there in the sun, we got to have sunscreen on, we have to have our hat on, we have to have our sunglasses on, and we have to put in, you know, uh, uh, protective clothing, long sleeve uh, clothing. So if that happens in the community, we don't want the Torani Koro chasing us away. But that's why we would like to work with uh, the Ministry of Itoke Affairs, you know, on that. You know, if that could be included in some of the kind of laws that they are doing. Some people with albinism have also highlighted some of their daily challenges. Looking at the blackboard, the small fonts, uh, the teachers normally ask me whether it's okay or whether it's not. Walking out in the sun, uh, it affects my eyesight. Going around, people call us and say names and make fun of us. The Ministry of Itoke Affairs has its aware of the needs of people with albinism and it will hold further discussions about the issue. Sabira Tamboa, FBC News.
there is a need to perform port biological baseline surveys in Fiji. The surveys will provide inventories of marine life in and around commercial ports visited by ships carrying ballast water. Kritika Kumar reports. The proposed survey will give accurate details of the situation at the major ports before preventative measures can be taken. It's sort of like establishing what is the situation right now before we do take any measures or implement any, any, any management measures. So that is one of the issues that are coming up, which is quite useful, and probably this will be one of the, the, the issues that will be followed up in the, in the coming years. John Alonso says they want Fiji to implement the IMO biofouling guidelines and ballast water convention. So it's a way of developing expertise in Fiji, and then we would like to use that expertise, for example, of the different areas uh, that are related to biofouling management, and then use that expertise to, to train other countries in the region with Fiji expertise. Maritime Safety Authority Chief Executive Captain Philip Hill says the implementation of the guidelines and the convention will prevent invasive species from entering our waters. Uh, the objective there is to reduce uh, the introduction of invasive uh, aquatic organisms and pathogens into, into our waters. The organisms are introduced uh, through how, by fouling, meaning uh, the marine creatures that stick uh, that attach themselves onto to the hulls of the ship. These invasive species can become pests in our marine environment. Fiji has ratified the Ballast Water Management and Anti-Fouling Systems Convention. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Well, Blood Donor Day was held at Munindawan District School in Neta Siri with the Health Minister highlighting the importance of the celebration. Minister Dr. Eferemi Wangainambete says this culture of giving and compassion is deeply embedded in Fiji society. He says blood donation is an opportunity to inculcate unity and bonding of the diverse communities. Voluntary giving of blood is the foundation and the strength of our service. And it is by putting others first and the effort of humans to save human lives and restore hope, happiness and provide the gift of life. Ahead in sport, Suva remains unbeaten in Skipper Cup. And Mustafa Fall aims to scoop gold for Fiji. This and more coming up. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Yeni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coro Coro, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Africa. The rugby side has booked its spot in the Skipper Cup final after beating Nandi 39 to 15 in the semi-final at Rajadakamba Park this afternoon. The win ensures the defending champions go through to the final with an unbeaten streak. Faria Begum reports. Suva fullback Enele Malele put the capital side to an early 5-0 lead before scratching the score to 27-3 at halftime. Suva's assistant coach Solomoni Nute was overjoyed after his side made it to the final. A big salute to the boys for the Hartford game. And uh, we thank the two players that are uh, enforced uh, that uh, the end of the game uh, we came out victorious. And Fijian's coach John McKee says this was a very exciting match. Suva really stamped their authority in the, in the first half there and I think you know you saw the power of their forward pack particularly with um, you know, the front row with with Tangi, Dolokoto and Maui in the front row put, put um, Suva scrum under a lot of the, the Nandi scrum under a lot of pressure. But you know, credit to Nandi, after half time they really came out really strong and firing at the break and really fought their way back into the game. Suva is now one step closer to defending its title. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the second semi-final match between Nandunga and Neta Siri was rather a dramatic one. Both teams ended the match with only a two-point difference. Nandunga aged Neta Siri 33-31, to booking the final ticket to face Suva in the Skipper Cup final. Here are the tries. Penalty try, Neta Siri. 
taken well there by other Simolo bumps off one or two and reaches out the try ah. well Sila Sila gets the offload going and Nandronga go forward and Nandronga get the pass away and Nandronga and then it comes straight to Nasila Sila. Nasila Sila ri- uh, runs across. Nasila Sila over the 22. Nasila Sila gets it out to Joeli Lutumailangi. Try number four. Joeli Lutumailangi. It's very close. And Naita Siri have got it. And uh, Naita Siri wait. Uh, the forwards have got that. Lomani marshalling his Siri. men. Salvoli looks for the offload. Koro Kavo. Here it comes for Nandronga. Looking for another one. Oh, beauty. What a try. World well, 7 Series Rookie of the Year nominee Philemon Botitu's local rugby side received a new set of jerseys from Combat Sportswear. The Korumbembe rugby team is a club based in Botitu's village in Nandi and it's where he started his rugby career. Combat Sportswear director Koji Tokito says this is a way in which Botitu can give back to the community that he was brought up in. Botitu is one of the many sevens players that Combat Sportswear has donated sports equipment to. We hope our small assistance towards the development of grassroots uh, uh, rugby at the grassroots level will go a long way in uh, helping them, assist them in uh, their club and in their game. Fiji Mbati coach Brendan Costin says they're preparing for the West when they will take on the West Tigers next Saturday. Costin says they will have to keep a close watch on West Tigers star Robbie Ferrer as he will play a crucial role for his side. Costin says that in preparation, the team will have to study every game that Farah has played. This is to gauge the strength of Farah's performance and to implement strategies to tackle him. Costin says Farah is a good runner and the Bati markers need to be on their toes in next week's match. We've got access to every game that Robbie has played on video. So we can start to take our clips of him setting up tries, him doing line breaks, um, obviously his tackle technique, etc. We can show that to our team and we can start to find a solution on how to tackle his strengths. The Fiji Mbati will march into camp from Monday and they will play Lebanon at 7.40pm next Saturday. Ba has defeated Suva 3-1 in their Vodafone Premier League match this afternoon to avenge their 5-4 Fiji Fact loss to Suva. Sola Wanga, Sanaila Wangani Zakau and Avinesh Swami netted the goals for the men in black. This was the first outing for Suva under the guidance of new coach Kamal Swami. But football coach Ronil Kumar says they're happy with the win as they extend their lead in the VPL standings. So we know Suva was, was really a tough team to beat, so, so I told boys, uh, I told boys it's going to be hard, eh, but it won't be impossible, so we have to work for it to get a three point. So they really proved themselves. They really played from their heart. So the result was there. Meanwhile, in the VPL matches tomorrow, Nandin will meet Tabua at Prince Charles Park, while Latoka will host Nasinu at Churchill Park. Both games will be played at 3 p.m. Well, Team Fiji hopes to secure gold medals for men's short port and discus in the Pacific Games through Mustafa Fall. The former Ratukandabu level school student has competed in a few events building up to the Pacific Games. Fall had recently broken the longest standing national men's discus record by Mesula Mirakuro, setting the new record of 53.04 meters. The old record was 51.84, set in 1958. Also, in his recent achievements, he broke the national short put record with a new one set at 16.21 meters. He told FPC Sports that he's working hard to challenge his recent achievements. I'm just trying to be the best that I can be. You know, uh, every competition for me is a, is a task, so I go out there and try to just be a better person and try to be a better me, a competitor. I would say. There's a lot, but mainly it's myself, you know, I just got to get over my own demons and, um, and just believe. Fiji-born Oliveretti Raka will have a chance to play for France in the Rugby World Cup, provided he performs well in the top 14 final tomorrow. The Chiefs have again proven that they cannot be taken lightly after securing a spot in the 2019 Super Rugby quarterfinals. The Chiefs triumph over the Rebels 59 to 8.
Generally, fine weather prevailed over most places today. Taking a look in the west, it was sunny conditions throughout with Singatoka and Nandi and Lotoka recording its temperatures in the 20s and the 30s. Ba picked up in the afternoon at 31 degrees. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was a mixture of sun and clouds with breezy conditions. And up north, it was cloudy conditions for Savu Savu, Lambasa, but Namawalu was mostly sunny. At sea, south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, the next high tide is at 5.16 tomorrow morning with low tide expected at 11.24 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.38. Now for tomorrow, shower is spreading over to some parts of the group, but mostly sunny and cloudy conditions throughout are expected. And we look further on to Monday, cloudy periods with cool breeze and brief showers are expected. Recapping the main stories, bus operators told to change with time. Police investigate bus stoning incident and the construction industry plays a vital role in the economy. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, are we on the right track in banning single-use plastic? Visit our FBC website to answer. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News, or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Soname Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson, Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot.